I'm going to show you how you can use ground control points as part of your processing routine when you upload your drone mapping data to GeoNADIA. So you need two things. The first is the folder full of the drone mapping images that you want to tie your ground control points to. And the second is a CSV file that has your ground control points in it and along with its their, their locations. So you'll see here is the, the CSV file that I've got. It's got four columns only and it contains the name of my ground control points, so GCP1 through 5 the northing, the easting, and the height of those locations. Now these have been corrected through post-processing. So the next step is to go to the URL gcp.geonidea.com and when you come to it it's a pretty bland URL I guess, nothing really exciting there, but there's just a couple of steps that you need to go through to get these these points into the correct format and match to your individual images. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to add the GCP file in there. So you can either use browse, but I'm a big fan of drag and drop. So I'm just going to drag and drop that straight into the interface and you'll see that it appears in the exact same way that we looked at in the CSV file. So the point name, the northing, the easting and the height. And so if you're not sure about the format to use, there's some templates that you can download here and make sure that you get your ground control points into those formats. The next part is probably the trickiest part. It's not that difficult, but perhaps the trickiest part is just to make sure that you get the coordinate information correct. So the way that I like to do this is just to click on the EPSG here and this will take me to a website to get the correct code for the coordinate system that I'm after. Now I know that I was working in zone 55 and so this is the easiest way for me just to find the correct coordinate system here. So just type in 55 and then enter or search and then go down here to find the correct combination of the datum and coordinate system that I was using. So I was using GDA 94 MGA 55. So I'm just going to click on that and ignore the little pop up. Now, when this comes up, there's a whole bunch of information. You might just want to double check that the information here is, is correct and you, you do appear in the right location, all that sort of thing. And we're just going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and click on this button here where it says Proj 4. And you're going to copy this text. So you can either highlight that and Control C, or I just like to hit Copy Text. Now, when you come over here, all you need to do is to paste it into this box here. Now you'll see it actually already pops up, so it remembers that I've done this before. So if you're always working in the same area, that's super simple. You don't have to go through and recopy that text or control V to pop that in. Now, once you've got that in there, you'll see that you've got the ability to go to the next step. So we're just going to click on this. And then what you see is the location of those ground control points over a base map. So this is your next step to just double check that you do have the correct location for each of your ground control points. You can click on each one so you know which one it's looking at. So that's my first one, second, third, fourth, and fifth back in the middle there. So the next step is making sure that we tag the right photos in our sequence with each of those ground control points. So I'm going to look at this one here and so I'm just going to click tag and the next thing that I need to do is to drag and drop or browse for the photos where it might be included. So I'm just going to grab the entire range of all of my photos. So 331 photos, I'm just going to drag them into there and it's going to do a quick search to try to find any of the photos that might be within a particular search distance. So at the moment, this is set at 35 meters. I'm gonna change that down to a 20 meter search distance. And you'll see that's reduced the number of photos that it's thinking are included with my ground control points. So in this particular one, I'm now going to look at any of these individual photos and find where my ground control points are. There is the option to detect GCPs, but I don't find that that works particularly well. So have, have a go if you've got a few photos, but I wouldn't recommend doing it if you've got lots of photos to go through. 
what I need to do is find a minimum of three, but preferably five or more photos that have my ground control point in it and, and identify those. And so I know that this is my ground control point here. I do actually have another ground control point over here. So just wanting to make sure that if you do have photos that have more than one ground control point in it, this will depend on your altitude, that you make sure that you are actually selecting the right one. So I'm going to jump straight into this one. So all you need to do is hold the shift key and I'm using the scroll button on my mouse. If you're using a trackpad, you can zoom in and out with that as well. And then I'm just going to continue to continue to pop in here and it has actually manually found this one as well. I'm going to continue to scroll in all the way here to my ground control point. And then when I'm at the appropriate level, I'm just going to click on that middle there and you'll see that I have one point in there and this now turns green. It has, it has manually found this one here, though I'm not happy with where it's tagged it. I really want that tag to be right in the middle there. So I'm going to make a correction just by clicking in the, in the correct spot there. I'm going to do this on another photo here to get my minimum of three for demonstration purposes. And then click right in the middle to where I'm happy. So you're gonna go through and do that on preferably five or more, but let's go with that for the moment. And I'm going to go to save changes. Now what you'll see here is I have my ground control point one and it's got three images here and that's all good. I'm then going to continue the exact same process with all of my other GCPs. So I'll go into GCP2 and as I go to that, it's automatically going to look in the same directory for those photos. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm scrolling with my mouse and holding shift on my keyboard and just find that exact spot where I want to place my GCP. And I'm going to continue to do that for all of my GCPs in the list. So you can see now that each of my GCPs has a minimum of three images associated with it. So this is really important. You need to have three for the GCP correction to work. Ideally, we recommend that you have five or more, but let's set that for the moment and we're going to click on to the next step. Now you'll see the, the check that you have all the information in this table here. So on the right hand side, you can see the GCP label one through five, the photo number or the photo name that is associated with that particular GCP label and the position on that particular photo. Now that's tied then to the actual location that was measured in the field and corrected for that GCP. So the X, Y and Z information and how that links to that particular photo. So just checking that you're all happy with that and you do indeed have all of your labels there, all you need to do then is to click to download that GCP file. When you're in Journadier, you go ahead and click to create a new project and then it's asking to add some data. So all I'm going to do is drag and drop all of those photos that has, have the GCP associated with them onto the platform and it's going to go through and read the images and take a moment to do that. Once it's finished reading the images, you can add any additional metadata that you might like, for example, including the description of the data set, any tags that are really helpful for finding the data set later. You can update information about the drone operator and the organization, any acknowledgements that you like. Decide whether or not you would like to share it to the Fair Geo global map for others to use as well. And then down here is where we're going to add our GCP file. Now I've popped that back into the folder where my original photos and the GCP file is. So here's my match GCP that I've just created that matches the photos with all of the GCPs. I'm just going to drag and drop that directly into that text box, box location there. Now, when you do this, you, can, you need to make sure that this GCP file actually matches the photos that you're uploading as well. If you want to make any amendments, change the name of that data set or anything that you like, go ahead and do that. And then when you're ready, all you need to do is click upload and we'll take care of the rest for you.